All right, what is up everybody? This is Alex once again with another episode of the EOT News Flash. This is not a typical episode because this is our full limited set review for Amon Kept the pre-releases this weekend. And despite work being super busy for me right now and not having a lot of time to do regular episodes, there was nothing going to stop me from reviewing all 269 cards, including the invocations, and giving you guys a leg up on the pre-release because that's... I'm a nice guy like that. You, I, I want you guys to go out there and win, win lots of packs, and you know, crush your opponents and just impress them with your your intricate knowledge of this wonderful set of magic cards. So we're gonna get sort of with the white cards. We're gonna do the blue cards, the black cards, the red, the green, the gold, the artifact, and the land card. Gold, the artifacts. Yeah, I said that right. All 269 cards, including the invocations. Um, before we kick off, I do want to let you know that I'm going to be going off of a four-point scale. Uh, one being the cards you will never ever play because they are crap. Uh, twos are your filler, your you know generic, you know basic creatures and spells. Threes are your premium spells, typically removal and more bombish creatures, usually on commons. And fours are the whiz bang super side kick to the head. I just roundhouse kicked the table over. And I won the game. I wouldn't recommend doing that, but that's kind of the effect these cards have on the game when you play them. Um, typically, you're going to win in short order once you resolve um, those fours. Um, there's also two subcategories here. We also have the build around me cards, um, which are typically, I'll, re I'll make note of those and reserve those. Typically, that's a, a, um, a rating typically saved for drafts, um, but can be to an extent in your limited sealed pools, depending on how your pool actually looks. And S are for sideboard cards, cards that you would only bring in um, when you're faced with a certain kind of card, maybe not, maybe enchantments or artifacts or different kinds of creature removal that you might not be um, readily able to be um, equipped with in your in your normal uh, deck. Um, but let's get started right away without any further ado with our white cards. We have our first mythic is Angel of Sanctions. This is a three white white mythic three four flying angel that when it enters the battlefield, I have to have the iPad up so I can keep track of all of these. Um, you may exile target non-land permanent opponent controls until Angel of Sanction leaves the battlefield. It's kind of like an O-ring effect here. And it also has the Embalm ability. Um, as we get to different um, instances of new mechanics, I'll make sure I note those. So our first Embalm creature here, um, this allows you to exile this card from your graveyard and create a token that's a copy of it instead. Except it's a white zombie, Angel with no mana cost, Embalm is only as a sorcery. So you'll basically... Um, Exile this card from your graveyard. This isn't summoning, mind you. So if your opponent tries to go, oh, Essence Scatter, gotcha, buddy. No, 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 that's not how this works. This is an activated ability. Um, the only way to stop this is with like a stifle effect or taking it out of the graveyard, like a scavenging use, or the black sort um, instant that removes three target cards from a graveyard they'll get to on their black side of the review. Um, but yeah, this this card is, is very, very good. Um, this is a solid four for me. It's removal. It's a big old flyer, and it can re and you can rebuy it later in the game for only six mana, uh, five generic, and a white. This is a solid four for me. First pick this if it's in your colors and your in your pool. Play Angel of Sanctions. What a card to get started on. Next card we have. Far less impressive. A noted procession. This is three and a white um, for an enchantment. It's rare. So if an effect would create one or more tokens under your control, it creates twice that many of those tokens instead. Um, I believe this is Parallel Lives 2.0, which was in green and original Innistrad block. Um, this is a build around me card in draft and a, a build around me if you get it in your sealed pools. Strictly speaking, um, unless you have, and, and there, there's some caveat here, that's why I'm, why the B for the build around me. Uh, if you have a lot of cards that embalm, if you have a lot of token generators, that's where a card like this comes in handy. You know, if you've got angel sections in your graveyard and you embalm that thing, holy crap, you just turned that game around or just put the game away so far out that you're not even considering losing anymore. This card can do some absurdly powerful things, but you do have to have the support for it, which is why it is at rare, so you don't want to see this all, the, all, the off, all that often. Um, but I think you can be comfortable taking the, first picking this in your draft, possibly. Or maybe it's, maybe it's going to wheel. I'm not exactly sure what this is going to be um, in the power ranking, honestly. Um, but I would definitely leave this in you know my box during limited events, sealed events specifically, um, unless I, like I said, have a lot of embalmed creatures or a lot of token generators. So this is a solid sideboard card for me. 
Uh, next one we have is Anointer Priest. This is a one in a white human cleric, 1-3. Whenever a creature token enters the battlefield under your control, you gain a life and you can embalm it for three in a white. And this card is actually worse than I thought it was. <laughs> Um, I, I had it at a 2.5, but after rereading it, that's all. It's, it's barely a 2 at this point. Creature token enters the battlefield under your control. You gain a life. Um, that's That that text might as well not even be there. Um, and like I said, unless you have a lot of embalmed creatures, a lot of token genders, this thing's going to be a 1-3 bear, which is respectable. It's a ground body. It's going to do some blocking. Um, it's probably not going to be trading anytime soon for anything, but it's a decent piece of, it's a decent body. If you need a 23rd, 24 playable, depending on your curve, I can see speaking your cut, but this is barely a 2 for me. Moving on. Next one we got is Approach of the Second Sun. I, I saw a, uh, a funny, uh, it's Mark Rosewater's Tumblr that he does, Blogatog, and uh, it was a weather report on Amonkhet. And the weather reporter basically is saying, we're in a desert on a plane, sort of by a force field, and there's two suns in the freaking sky. It's hot! That being said, this card's kind of cool, actually. Approach of the Second Sun is a six and a white sorcery. If Approach of the Second Sun was cast from your hand and you've cast another spell named Approach of the Second Sun this game, you win the game. Otherwise, put Approach of the Second Sun into its owner's library, seventh from the top, and you gain seven life. Um, so, from your hand is important. Um, so you can't like, do anything stupid shit against with this. Um, that's really relevant in this format, at least. Um, Approach of the Second Sons. This is this is a one point five for me because this this is what you're trying to do here. You're hitting a land drop until turn seven. You're draw. You've drawn this by then, or you draw it. You cast it. You gain your seven life, and you shuffle and you put it from your library. That's seven more draws. You've got to survive fourteen turns at minimum to get this off. Um, like, it's a cool other alternate win con, I'm not going to lie. You know, very rarely do cards like this make an impact in limited formats. You know, uh, Battle of Wits comes to mind. Yeah, I'm, I'm not playing 200 plus cards in a limited deck. There's no way in hell. Um, I, I would leave this in your sideboard. This is a solid 1.5 for me. It, you might make an excuse if the deck, if your opponent's playing just like the grindiest of Grindfest and so are you. Eh, I could, I, eh, just, no, absolutely not. Unless you can like ramp into it, then we might have something you can kind of like draw some cards extra. I don't know, but still, 1.5, leave it alone. Next one we have is Aven Mind Sensor. The bird is the word, and the wizard is back. Two and a white bird wizard, two one flash flying. If an opponent wants to search his or her library, that player searches up only the top four cards of their library instead. Um, and modern, this thing is a well, it, it has, it used to be, um, is a house for trying to spoil fetch lands, search effects like Court of Calling, things like that. Um, in limited, it's it's not as great. You know, a 2 1 flash flyer for three is still pretty powerful. It's a solid 2.5 for me. Um, I can't, off the top of my mind, off my head, think of any search effects in this format, in this set. So the extra clause on there is kind of irrelevant. Um, but it's still pretty cool. Solid 2.5 for me. Flash flyers, always good. Next up we have is Binding Mummy. One in a white, two, two zombie. When another zombie enters the battlefield under your control, you may tap target artifact or creature. It's a bear with upside. It's a two. Uh, I don't know. I, I think in draft, the zombie clause of tapping creatures or artifacts will come into play much more often than it will in sealed. Um, but I wouldn't I wouldn't discount this thing's ability um, in a pinch, you know, if like again, if you're needing a 23rd, 24 card in your in your deck and you're kind of aggressive, I can see this being good. If you've got a lot of mummies to work with, or and zombies I should say, these are not mummy subtypes, these are zombies. Um, I think that's where you want to go with cards like this. Uh, maybe if you play like an aggressive white deck with a lot of copies of this in your draft format, then you might have an excuse for these things. Um, but as it is, I'm giving this thing a two. It's it's just a bear, nothing special. Next up, we've got Cartouche of Solidarity. I learned I cannot type Cartouche to save my life this afternoon as I wrote up these notes. Uh, one white aura Cartouche enchantment. Enchant target creature you control. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one white warrior token with Vigilance, and the creature you're enchanting gets plus one, plus one, and has first strike. That's not terrible, honestly. I mean, that's one mana for two bodies, and pray they don't bounce it in response, because then you look really dumb. Um, yeah, this, is, this, is, this isn't a terrible card at all. Um, I'm typically not a fan of um, 
permanent based um, pump effects like this. Uh, typically, I like mine to be a more combat trick oriented. Um, things that your opponent has to actually actively play around. They see this coming. Um, and unless you've just got, you know, just the dominant creature on the board, a big old beast that's just, you know, a four or five or whatever that's just beaten down turn after turn, I, I'm probably going to leave this on my sideboard, though. This is decent filler, solid two for me. Um, again, there's this token sub thing going on here, so you do maybe have an excuse uh, if your pool wants to play with that kind of a sub theme. But other than that, not great here. Just a two. <laughs> Pardon me. Next up, we have Cast Out, three and a white enchantment with Flash. Flash is good. EOT, news Flash. This card is already good. Uh, when Cast Out enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until Cast Out leaves the battlefield. Cycles for a white. So, let's hit that first box of text there. Flash, O-Ring. Already good. O-Ring's been playable in every freaking format it's been legal in as far as limited goes. Even standard for crying out loud. O-Ring is amazing. This card is no different. Planeswalkers, enchantments, artifacts, uh, creep, ev anything but a land, you can hit with it with this, and that's awesome. Getting it cycling makes it that much better, and I think that's why, I, I mean, I'm giving this thing a straight up three, almost a 3.5 for removal like this. That's practically, um, is unconditional removal, actually. Um, the cycling is great. Um, I, I will have a, add a caveat here. The cards that have cycling in this set, I am getting a slightly higher rating depending on, you know, if they are, you know, like a bread and butter spell, like, uh, you know, just a bear or a cheap removal spell. Cards like that, when they have cycling tacked on them, just become that much better because you can play them in your main deck and you think, well, maybe I'll have a target for this. Maybe I won't. Maybe this card will be good in certain situations. Maybe it won't. You know, you, you, you kind of have to measure that for yourself. Um, but cards that can cycle are just that much better than a card that cannot cycle simply because it can always replace itself. And I think that's why this card is, you know, obviously very, very good. And that art is gorgeous, probably looks great in a foil. Um, but Cast Out is a solid 3, 3.5, just barely misses it for me. Um, for being 4 mana, but hell, it's, it's limited. Your removal is king, take it often. Uh, next we have Compulsory Rest. One in a white enchantment aura enchants a creature. Enchanted creature can't attack or block. And it has pay two, sacrifice this creature, you gain two life. I I don't know where you want to go with this card, honestly. Um, honest, you can, you can put it on a creature that your opponent controls. And it can't attack or block anymore, which is, which is fine, which is fine. Um, but they can just sacrifice the creature by using compulsory rest. Um, this is a pretty mediocre removal spell. If they have a big bomb, there's like, ah, I gotta get rid of that somehow. You, you compulsory rest it, they sacrifice it, they gain the life, blah, 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 problem solved at least. Um, other than that, it's just real, it, it's, it's not a great um, removal spell here. S removal spells that give your opponents a choice, um, even just mechanics in general, punch mechanics like this, are, are traditionally not great. Um, your opponent can just simply bounce it back to their hand if they're playing blue, or you know just destroy the enchantment outright. You know this this is not what I consider a good removal spell. One point five, maybe a two if you're really stretching for playable removal in in your white decks. But ugh, this one's rough. Next we have is devoted crop mate. Uh, this is a 2 and a white human warrior. It's a 3-2. You may exert devoted crop mate as it attacks. When you do, return target creature with converted mana costs uh, 2 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. An exerted creature does not untap during your untap step. That's the sort of those nice mechanics coming from. You attack, you exert it, and it does, and it stays out of your upkeep. Um, that's not a terrible ability. Um, whites, I, I, actually, a good number of the, of the colors in this set have decently powerful two drops that I can see this thing actually making a difference, especially if you have some really smaller utility creatures. Uh, I can definitely see this being a pretty solid card. And it's a 3-2. I mean, that's, a, that's great stats already. Um, so if even if it's going to trade even to exert to get something back out of your graveyard, it's, it's pretty awesome. I, I like this card a lot. I give it a 2.5. The body's a little weak, but the power is there, and the effect can be very good in some cases. Uh, next up, we've got uh, Jeru's Resolve. Uh, who is Jeru? 
I don't know what's going on here. One white instant untapped target creature prevents all damage that would be dealt to it this turn and it cycles for two. The generic cycling cost uh, makes, uh, what is that card? Uh, ex Exeter? Ex um, there's a, an artifact from, I, th I forget which block it is, that makes your cycling things cost two less, making them eventually, eventually fruit of cards like this. Uh, anyway, this is the, I just tricked you into thinking that I couldn't defend myself when I exerted my creature last turn trick. Um... Be aware of this card. Um, my my biggest advice to anybody who is 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 newer to limited environments, um, please study the combat tricks in this set. Do not think because your opponent is tapped is tapped a big creature that you are safe um, to throw in with a, with your your three guys. I guarantee you. Eventually, it will catch up with you. They might not have it, but they might. And when they do have it, things go horribly wrong. So, keep that in mind. This is a decent trick, but if your opponent is doing a lot of exerting, um, specific, specifically in this set, or um, just be aware that this is a possibility. So, always take that into consideration when you're attacking. I gave it a solid two. It's a decent fill or trick. If you've got a lot of exert creatures in your pool, or you drafted the exert deck, go ham with a card like this. It cycles as well, replacing itself when, thing, when you don't need it. Excellent card. Solid two, maybe a 2.5, but definitely solid filler here. Next one we have is Fan Bearer. One white zombie, one two. Pay two and tap it. Tap target creature. This is your classic white tapper, your Gideon's Law Keeper. I mean, how many other ways have they printed this card? Tappers are always great. You know, any amount of, you know, as long as it's not like four mana, I would even pay three mana in some cases if the format's slow enough to constantly tap in the biggest threat on the board. And this guy's no different. Uh, solid two for me. I like a good tap bear. Next up, we've got Forsake the Worldly. Ooh, there's Gideon. We'll get to him in a second. Uh, two and a white instant. Exile target artifact or enchantment, and it cycles for two. Now, this is a classic sideboard card here. Naturalized effects like this always tend to be in the sideboard unless your format was designed around the particular target for it. Enchantments or artifacts. I can think back to Theros block, where it was doable to main deck enchantment rule because you had all the enchantment creatures. Think back to Scars of Mirrodin or Mirrodin block itself. Oxidize effects, shatter effects were very playable because some of those artifacts were so powerful. Um, I, I did the quick count. There's only 30 enchantments in this set. Of them, I would say maybe five are actually like really good. Like you've got to take care of this card right now, otherwise you're going to lose to it. And that's being generous. It does cycle. That is an early break. Like it, that makes it better if like if you saw that your opponent had a good enchantment in their deck and you draw this and you're like, well, it's not on the board right now. Even if they had it, it's not going to affect anything right now. Nah, I can just pitch it and draw a new card at some point. That's all the better. Um, as it stands, though, it's still just a sideboard card for me. Um, I'm not doing a whole lot with this, honestly. Next up, Gideon of the Trials. Oh, boy. One white, white. Planeswalker, Gideon. Three loyalty. Plus, I, I gotta, his text is too small. I gotta bust out the iPad again. One second. <laughs> All right. Fine, Mr. Gids. There he is. Getting into the trials. Plus one until your next turn prevents all damage. Target put a permanent would deal. That's permanent. Land. Enchantment. Artifact. Planeswalker. If it's a thing that does damage to you or a creature you control, prevent it. Zero. Until end of turn, getting into the trials becomes a 4-4 human soldier creature with indestructible, as he does, that's still a planeswalker, prevents all damage that would be dealt to him this turn. If, it, if a Gideon doesn't do this, is it actually a Gideon anymore? I don't know. And also, zero. You get an emblem with as long as you control a Gideon Planeswalker, you can't lose the game, and your opponent can't win the game. Shit! Platinum Angel on a, on a, on a Planeswalker? Come on, Wizards. Jesus. All right, this guy's obviously a four. Um, being able to bubble the, the plus one ability every single turn, your opponent's best threat is already insane. 
Once the game is stabilized, turn this guy into a 4-4 and just bashing over and over and over is really, really good. The zero ability on an empty... If, if your opponent hasn't played anything and you drop this on the play and immediately make an emblem and your subsequent terms are just plus one that guy, plus one that guy, plus one that guy, plus one that guy, and you're consistently playing dudes at the same time, there is no way in hell you are losing that game unless they have a, you know, cast out. There is absolutely, probably next to nothing you can do. I would say that your chances of winning that game are probably somewhere in like the 95% or higher. Holy crap, this thing's insane. Is it good enough for Constructed? I don't know. This card's insane for Limited. It's a solid four. Uh, next, we have Gideon's Intervention. Two white, white enchantment. As it enters the battlefield, choose a card name. Your opponent can't cast cards with the chosen name. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to you and permits you control by sources with the chosen name. This is tricky here. Um, don't put this in your main deck thinking, oh, I'm just going to name my opponent's best card as soon as he plays it. No, 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 no. You've done absolutely jack nothing to them. It's, they're just going to go whatever. They're just going to play around it at that point. Um, only bring this out of your sideboard if your opponent has something that you know you can't beat, like a god, or I don't know, Gideon, for that matter. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the, yeah, cards like this that require your opponent to be playing a, to, to have a card in their deck that matches what you're wanting to play against makes this thing really iffy. It's a sideboard card at best, but when it does work, you're going to be high-fiving your friends and you're like, dude, I got him. I interventioned him. It was great. He didn't kill me ever. It's fantastic. Uh, sideboard card. Next, we've got Glory Bound Initiate. One white human warrior, when you you may exert it as it attacks, and when you do, it gets plus one, plus three, and it gains life leak until the end of turn. It is a one, three human warrior at rare. I don't need to point out the fact that Always Watching turns this thing into a 5-5 five, five on turn 3. You're not clever for noticing that anymore, people. It's just how it goes. Anyway, this thing's insane. Um, attacking on turn 3 with a 4-4 four, four power guy with lifelink. What on earth are they going to do to block this thing? I don't know. Whatever they're going to block him with is probably dead or they're just going to take the chip shot. Um, thankfully, Exert keeps a tap for a turn. Cards like this make Exert really scary. It makes um, Jeru's Resolve really scary when you can repeatedly do this. Um, I do believe this thing will see standard play. This guy is nuts. Um, this gets a three for me. If it was a slightly bigger body, and I, and I know that you have to keep a body like this on the smaller side um, because things like Magma Spray has to be effective in this format, this is still a really good card. This is a three for me. Almost a 3.5. I might be able to redact that rating and improve it once you see this from where it actually shakes out. Next, we've got Gust Walker. Uh, one in a white, 2-2 two, two, human wizard. When you exert it, it gets, as it attacks, it gets plus one, plus one, and flies until the end of turn. Bears with upside are always good. 2.25, 2.5-ish, uh, 2.5, whatever. Uh, bears that fly are always good. Bears that sometimes fly, eh, not as good, but still pretty sweet. Um, I, I like this guy a lot. As soon as the ground get, gets clogged up, I start going to the sky with this thing every other turn. Just clocking in. No problem asked. Uh, next we have Impeccable Timing. One in a white instant. Impeccable Timing deals three damage to target attacking or blocking creature. Why is it so hard to say? Um, this was recently printed in Kaladesh, I believe. Um, conditional removal like this where it's a set amount of damage on a conditional... Um, creature, you know, attacking or blocking in that sense, is is decent um, if you can, you know, maybe block a guy and trade a bigger guy and then use this to trade up. You're pretty you're feeling pretty good. Um, if the format's a lot of smaller creatures, which it kind of looks like it might be, um, depending on how aggressive the format is, this thing is actually not terrible. Um, but it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a solid 2.5. It's, it's decent removal. It's not quite, you know, unconditional where your threes and fours usually sit, but I still like this card for what it does. Uh, 2.5 for me. Next we have in Oketra's name and who is Oketra? We'll get to that in a moment. If you're watching this on YouTube, you already see it here. If you're listening to this on the MTG cast, well, go watch it on YouTube. You get to see me do this. You get to see me flop my hands around and act like, act like, you're, like a crazy person. Uh, one in a white instance. Zombies you control get plus two, plus one until end of turn. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus one until the end of turn. 
This is a pretty cheap overrun effect, and the upset on the zombie bit, that's actually kind of cool. Um, now, to be fair, the zombies for the most part in this set are relatively small, like twos and threes at best. Um, the humans, everything else, like this is, this is a fine combat trick. If it had an effect like first strike, then we're pushing like a decent many four mana. But as it is, um, like you might blow somebody out one time with this but it won't happen ever again. Um, again, this is one of those cards that you need to be aware of in the set. Otherwise, you're going to look like an idiot when it's just like, oh man, I just got Oketra's name again. Ugh, that's, that's Oketra's name. Ugh, that's the noise you make. Um, yeah, just, just, just be aware of cards like this that exist in the set. That's all I ask you to do. Uh, but this does get a 2.5 from me, just being pretty decent filler combat trickish. Next, we've got Mighty Leap, which I have to take problem with the art. Typically, when you're thinking of a Mighty Leap, I think of the Rhino from the Corsa. It has, like, those wings on it, and it's like, woof! Rhino jumping in the air. This chick right here, though, is jumping off an obelisk going all Assassin's Creed style. That is not a Mighty Leap. That's a leap of faith that you pray there's a basket of hay at the bottom of the ground. But still, target creature gets plus two, plus two, and gains fly until the end of turn for one and a white. Again, it's a decent combat trick. You can always, you know, surprise your opponent. They're like, ha ha, dragon gets you. You're like, no! You know, bullet comes up, must come down. Whatever. 2.5, though. Not a bad combat trick. I like combat tricks, though. Next, we've got Oketra the True, our cat god. Three and a white gets to a legendary creature god. It's a 3-6. Double strike. Indestructible. And she cannot... I'm assuming it's a she. One second. Need to view the art a little bit closer. I'm gonna assume. I like, never assume somebody's gender. Like I get that, you know, whatever. Uh, but I'm gonna go with that's a, that's a girl. Anyway, um, cannot attack or block unless you control at least three other creatures. And look at that, she makes her own creatures. Three and a white. Create a 1-1 one, one white warrior creature token with Vigilance. Vigilance is insane to put on these tokens here. Um, I believe Heli Heliod, um, the, the white god, did the same as well. Um, quick note on the gods here. Um, obviously, this is a 4. Um, if, if you drop this thing and just keep playing dudes, I'm going to kill you with Oketra. It's that simple. You cannot stop a 3-6 double-striking god. It's just not going to happen unless you just manage to lose your entire board state. But at that point, I'm just making warriors. But why aren't they cat tokens either? I don't know. Um, quick note on the gods. Um, they are... I, I All of them have manageable effects except for one. Um, and we'll get to that one later on in the, in the set review. Um, but they are all insanely powerful. I like the fact that, that you don't have to turn them on. Um, like the like the like the gods from Theros, you had you know the original the five color the monocolored gods like Thassa and Erebos and, and Perforos who needed five devotion to turn on five colored mana symbols that match their color identity to, to become gods, and you needed seven for the the, the, the dual colored gods uh, Karanos, Karametra. Um, so I like these better already just because they are just. They're always creatures. They're not like, oh, it's kind of an enchantment right now, and then it's kind of a creature right now. It's, 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 it's weird. Um, can you... Yes, you could have exiled those with Forsake the Worldly um, if you were playing against somebody playing Theros cards in the set. Um, I, I am curious to see if we get a, a Deicide-esque effect in our devastation. Deicide was the, uh, the instant that exiled a creature or enchantment, I believe, and if it was a god, you got every copy out of their deck, which was absolutely disgusting if you're playing mono blue like happened to me once. Anyway, um, yeah, Okitra's awesome. Solid four. First picker. She's even splashable um, in some cases. So go, go, hand with Okitra. Make all the soldiers and just follow the cat god to victory. What more can you say? Next, you have her um, here, their attendant, Oketra's attendant. This is a three white, white bird soldier flying, cycling to three, three, that embalms for three white, white. This thing's insane. This is, this is as close to a, like, rare power level uncommon as you can possibly get. 
You're telling me that I can pay five mana and get a three three, or I can cycle it early in the game and then get it back for the same amount of mana? That's insane. Moving on, it's all at three. I don't want to gush. I could probably go for a little bit longer on that card. That card's nuts. Uh, next, we have Protection of the he Hekma? Hekma? I, whatever. Four and a white uh, enchantment. Add uncommon. If a source of your opponent controls would deal damage to you, prevent one of that damage. Uh, unless your opponent's like throwing a bunch of like little one ones at you, just stay away from this. Um, do note that this is a damage to you. Do not make the mistake of thinking that, oh, I'm going to block with my 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 3-3 three, three on your 3-3 three, three, and it's going to deal and it's going to negate one of those damages and I'm going to kill your guy because that's not how it's going to work. It's damage to you. If the 1-1 one, one hits you, you take no damage. If you take damage from a 2-2, two, two, you take one damage. Not if your creature takes damage from a 3-3, three, three, it, it comes into 2. That's, that's not how this works. Make sure you understand that. A lot of cards will just say if a source of damage would deal damage to you or a creature you control, prevent one of those damages. Just make sure you understand that and be very well aware of that. Uh, this is a 1.5. This is almost sideboard territory for me here, but I would not want to play this card under, a lot of, under most circumstances. This next card I have absolutely zero problem playing every single time. We have Regal Caracal. Uh, Car Caracal, three white white cat. 3-3. Three, three. Other cats you control get plus one, plus one, and have lifelink. When Regal Cat, uh, Regal Caracal <laughs> enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one white cat creature tokens with lifelink. Um, it's it's important to note that they don't have two occurrences of lifelink. They just have one because that's how magic rules work. Um, you're, this thing gives you seven power, three, four, five, yeah, seven powers of cats, and they all have lifelink. This one doesn't, but whatever. Um, this thing is absolutely nuts. This is this this is insane. This is this is a four as fours can go. Holy crap! First picket played in your seal pulls. Regal Caracal. Meow. The cat's meow, if you will. Oh, bad jokes. Next we have. I believe this is a reprint. Renewed Faith. Uh, two and a white. You gain six life cycles for one and a white. When you cycle it, you may gain two life. Why would it be May? Whatever. Maybe your opponent has, like, uh, Leyland of Punishment in play. God forbid. Um, this this is a card that's that's kind of hard to evaluate. Um, and, I'll, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll break down my reasoning here on this one. Um, on its on its face, three life, three mana to get six life is not a terrible rate. Um, that's going to soak, that's going to at least take off a turn, if not more, of your opponent swinging at you, depending on what stage of the game this is in. Um, being able to cycle it, you know, and gain a fraction of that life, plus the card, isn't terrible. Um, but this is not something I want to be constantly playing. This feels like filler. I could be wrong if the format is, uh, is, is quite aggressive. Now, that being said, um, I've mentioned this a few times on the show before, whether it's been in other set reviews or on different episodes with talking with the rest of the team. But a good friend of mine um, once talked to me about there is a threshold of life gain that you can hit in a game of limited where it puts the game out of reach for your opponent. And his theory was that's around 27. 27 life, not gain, but just if you can get to effectively what, have, what would have been 27 life. Um, and, and of course, this, take a very grain of salt, um, it puts the game out of your opponent's reach because most players, typically newer players, mind you, I'm not saying this is, you know, all players make this mistake, but typically your newer players only build a deck to deal 20 damage. You know, you, your deck runs out of gas around that point, you know. Some some limited games turn into a bit of a slog where it's like, oh, I just get those last three points of damage across, and we're in this board state. And I'm like, oh, I can't win now. My opponent can't win either, and we're both miserable and just ah, uh, terrible. So, I don't want you to think that you're like, I'm just gonna cast this spell and I can't lose anymore. Dan, don't think that. If you built your deck properly, and you can put up a decent defense as well as a good offense, the six life can actually be a huge boon to your percentage to win the game like i said that's almost that's two turns in some cases maybe maybe less depending on what say the game is like i said that you have undone of your opponent's um attacks so 
I put this at a two, 2.5. It's good filler. Um, again, if the format becomes aggressive, especially in draft, even in limited uh, um, sealed to an extent, I can see this being main deckable. But be careful when you're when you're trying to evaluate cards like this. Um, but again, always kind of keep that life game thing in the back of your mind. Um, it's 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 not a it's it's an important aspect of the game to remember that your life total is a resource, and if you've got more of a resource than your opponent does, that puts you in a better position to win. I think so. So a two, maybe a two point five in some cases. Next we have Ret, Ret Crop, Ret Crop Spearmaster. Two and a white, three one, that you can exert it as it attacks. If you do, or when you do, it gets plus one zero and gains first strike until the end of turn. Four one first strikers for three. Muy bien. Uh, as it is though, this is a solid two, 2.5 for me. Um, again, the body's really tiny. Um, if you're like, especially if you get in a position where you can't afford to exert this anymore, it becomes a bit of a liability. At three mana, my three ones need to be a little bit more impactful at that. So it's not great. It still falls in the realm of filler for me. But if you can get aggressive with this guy, not bad at all. Two, 2.25 for me. Uh, next we have Sacred Cat. One and a white, one, one life link, and you can embalm it for a white. Uh, yeah, moving on. <laughs> uh, honestly, cards like this just do not impress me. One ones for one, unless you were in the most hyper aggressive of decks, will just get stonewalled and you might gain three or four life off this thing before it just becomes absolute fodder. It's leave these things alone. Solid two, filler, and not even good filler with that. This is kind of cute though. Next we have Seraph of the Suns. We have a five white white angel flyer, four four indestructible. My god, that's a lot of mana for a four four flying indestructible. Um if if you're playing like a slower draft deck, if you draft as like a slower white control, maybe blue white or, or red or, or white black in some cases. I can see this being a thing if your seal deck's kind of slow and you need a top end, that's fine. Indestructible threats are not easy to get rid of in limited typically, especially when there's not a lot of minus mi minus effects going on. Be aware though that there's a lot of minus minus one counters in this set. So that four four could be really good until they slap two on it and all of a sudden you have a seven mana two two flyer and you look like a fool. Um, this is a 2.25, 2.5 for me still though. That's a pretty beefy body with a not with a with, with a very relevant combat ability. Um, this thing will rumble quite well. Um, so just you know, keep that in mind as you're playing. You know, if, if you need the top end, go for it. Uh, next we have sp sparring, sparing. <laughs> I would play this card sparingly, actually. Uh, three and a white, three, three zombie. When it ends the battlefield, you may untap target creature. So then again, this is another one of our undo my exerted creature effects. Um, four mana, three threes, that's a hill giant. Hill giants are totally playable, and the effect just makes it that much better. This is a solid filler right here. 2.25 for me. I, I'm not embarrassed to have one of these in my deck. Um, even if you're not playing exert creatures, it's cool to be able to just give your guys a pseudo vigilance. So yeah, rock and roll on this one. Next one we have supply caravan. We have camels. Camels are great. <laughs> uh, four and a white, three five camel. When it enters the battlefield, if you control a tapped creature, like an exerted creature or a post combat main phase creature, you're playing this. Um, you may create a one one white camel creature token with vigilance. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, uh, four mana, three fives are pretty typical and limited. Um, five mana, five toughness is not easy to get around in some cases. Um, again, if you think you're building aggressive, an aggressive steel deck and someone plays this on you and you're like, well, I'm dead, the camel killed me. Um, <laughs> uh, 2.25 for me though. Um, I'm trying to think back to the, um, the caravan thing from, uh, Oh, shoot, man. Tarkir that you could outlast. I forget the things, but it was like a 3-5. You just get massive over time. Uh, anyway, so I know. Uh, 2.25 for me, though. I like camels. Camels are cool. All right. Next we have is the Takrup. Takrup. I, 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 come on, wizards. Give me something I can work with here. Jeru, Cartouche, Oketra, Takrup. It's a, it's a four mana, three and a white, bird warrior, two, two flyer. You may exert it when it attacks. It gets plus one, plus one until the end of turn. Four mana, two, two flyers are absolutely fine. And once you can start, you know, turn up the, the heat a little bit with this guy and start exerting it, 
Yeah, not terrible. Uh, 2.25 for me. I like things that fly. Next, we have those who serve. That's just their name. They're just those. They don't have like a name, actually. They're zombies. Two to white, two four. And a big old wall of header text. The dead perform all the work here. Blah, 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 blah. Temen's Vizier of Naktamun. That's the guy, the gold guy. He's actually kind of cool. We'll get to them later. All uh, right. So uh, this guy's not terrible. I mean, two, four for three mana. That's, that's you know, things that have beefier bodies and they do t power typically go better in um, more grindier, mid-rangey, sort of maybe even borderline control decks and limited um, and, and drafts to, to an extent as well. Obviously, this thing isn't, isn't great, but it's going to soak up a lot of damage over the course of the game and just defer your opponent from trying to attack you into this thing. And if they do, they've probably got a trick. So you're like, all right, I'll just let that three damage go by. No big deal. Um, 2.25 for me, though. Uh, next we have is t uh, Time to Reflect. Uh, one white instant exile target creature that blocked or was blocked by a zombie this turn. This is an uncommon. So exile target creature that, because I have to make sure I understand this one myself, that blocked or was blocked by a zombie this turn. That blocked. That blocked is that was that blocked by a zombie, or was blocked. That block. Sideboard. <laughs> well, I I oh, maybe I'm overthinking this card, but yeah, sideboard this one. Um, when your opponent plays a lot of zombie cards against you, break it out, go crazy with it. Um, yeah, go from there. Uh, next we've got Trial of Solidarity. This is a two and a white um, enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, creatures you control get plus one, plus, plus two, plus one, and gain vigilance until the end of turn. Wowzers. And when a cartouche enters the battlefield under your control, return it to your hand. That's pretty hot, actually. Um, being able to replay anthem effects like this, um, just for playing the cartouches, which, to be fair, they're all re reasonably playable. Um, I wouldn't take those cartouches over the trials themselves. Take the trials and then find your cartouches. Um, the trials are also quite powerful on their own as well. Even even you know just a one shot effect like this, it's not terrible. But if you can replay this thing once, God forbid twice, you're doing pretty well in that game. I think it's in a lot of cases. So I gave Trial of Solidarity a solid three. Really like this card a lot. Uh, next we have True Heart Duelist. This is one of the game day participation promos, I believe. One in a white 2-2 two, two human warrior that can that can block an additional creature each turn and embalms for two and a white. Like I said, bears with upside are great. Uh, 2.5 for me. The card's not bad at all. Next we have Unwavering Initiate. Two and a white vigilance embalm with four and a white. Uh, three to a vigilance. Not terrible. Um, the Smaller body makes up the fact that it doesn't that it has vigilance or vigilance makes it up for having a small body. There we go. Um, this card's not terrible though. I gave it a two. Uh, next up, we're running. We're getting to the end here of our white cards. We have a Vizier of Deferment, two and a white with flash. When it enters the battlefield, you may exile target creature if it attacked or blocked this turn. Return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control, beginning with the next end step. So. Your guy blocks their big guy, and it ha your guy has a sweet ETB effect. B4 damage. You're like, hold on, bro. Effects. Vizier of Deferment. Blink, my dude. Prevent the damage. Get this sweet ETB effect. Boom! Blowout! That's how you do this card right here. Um, or, you know, vice versa. If it attacks you, you want to be able to reset it. Maybe it has uh, Exert, like Glory Bringer. There, there you go, people. I'm, trying to, I'm teaching you how to build these decks. Teaching you guys. Come on. Uh, Vizier of, um, uh, what do we get? Deferment? Solid three. I like this guy a lot. Flash creatures are awesome. Uh, next we have Vizier of Remedies. One in a white. If one or more minus one, minus one counters will be put on a creature you control, that many minus one, minus one counters are put on it instead. Minus one are put on it instead. Um, a lot of the effects in this set only put one. A couple of them put more than that, but most of them only put one counter on at a time. So this thing could essentially negate all of the effects that are prime. That are, actually, they're all in black, actually, um, to put minus one, minus one counters on your creature. So this guy's actually kind of insane. Um, his body is quite pathetic, though. He is a, a slightly beefier squire. I forget what the 2-1 typically is called here. Um, Savannah line, I think. Um, 
but not bad. You know, almost pushing the 2.5, maybe a three. You know, if your opponent's heavy in on the minus one, minus one counter game, this thing is just going to be an absolute nightmare for them to handle. And they've got to handle this thing first. 2.25 for me, 2.5 on the borderline. Next, we have Wing Shepherd, a.k.a. not Avison. I swore it was Avison when I saw this. I, I, I know what happened during the storyline, but I could have swore... Wait, is she dead? I know that she's, like, all evil now and, like, burned the villages, but I... I whatever. Wing Shepherd, five and a white, three, three, flying vigilance, cycling for one. Um, these common massive flyers like this, this is not a terrible rate for what you're getting out of it. That is, you know, vigilance and flying for six mana, that's not terrible at all. And on a pinch, I can cycle this away. Not bad at all. I like this card. 2.25 for me, borderline filler, but pretty damn good filler at that. Next, we have our last proper white card. This is Dusk and Dawn. This is one of those goofy aftermath split card thingies here. Um, Dusk, two white, white sorcery. Destroy all creatures of power three or greater. Dawn, sorcery. Aftermath can only be cast from your graveyard. Return all creature cards with power two or less from your graveyard to your hand. There we go. <laughs> Should have busted out the iPad for that one. Um, I like this simply as a sweeper um, to blow up your opponent's big board. Like, that's that's great. Um, the Dawn half of it, it's pure upside, I think. All these split cards, if the front half, the top half is good, the bottom half is just icing on the cake. It's just gravy at that point. Um, if you've got a lot of creatures that have two power or less... <laughs> Um, then I fine, reload your hand, go crazy with it. Um, I that's a build around me aspect of this card. Maybe in draft, I'm a little more inclined to lean heavier onto that dawn half, you know, wipe the board and bring all the creatures back the next turn. Eh, maybe, but as it stands, this is all it's sweepers or sweepers, you know, conditional sweepers aren't great, but it's better than nothing. And board cells happen in these formats, and this is going to pick off a couple of things at least. So I gave it a solid three, might be a 2.5 depending on the shape of the format, but as it stands right now, it is a solid three for me, um, with that build around aspect off of the Dawn half. All right. Now, what I'm going to do for the invocations here, I actually did not put the invocations in the Kaladesh set review. I, I know I missed Aether Revolt. Whatever. Um, but... as uh, And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rank them individually on their, on their own power level. I mean, all of the cards from... Um, Kaladesh and Aether Revolt were pretty just much busted, except for like Ornithopter. Um, in one way or another, in your um, limited formats, you mostly played all of them. You know, things like Soul Ring, Moxable, things like that were just crazy good to go. These are a little bit different here, so I'm going to do them on a one on a case by case basis um, as we go through. I don't have them pulled up on the front of me, so you just have to go with me. But I am going to do that over here. So. Bear with me one moment as I jump over to mythicspoiler.com where you can see all. Actually, they're, they're working on every set ever um, and just having visual spoilers of all that. So I think, I think it's really cool of them to do something like that. So our first white invocation is Containment Priest, which was actually printed in a uh, Commander product, I believe, 2015, if I'm not mistaken. And Containment Priest is a... Uh, that thing right there. Uh, it's a one and a white with flash 2-2. Two, two. If a non-token creature would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast, important, exile instead. Audience, invisible cast members of my own, what does Embalm not do? That's right. It doesn't cast them at all. Um, wow. Just not, just, you're, it's not happening. It's gone. Exiled. Uh, what does Liliana do in this set? Oh, she reanimates things. Are you casting those? Cast, audience, no, no, yeah, no, gone, exiled, contentment priest, awesome. Uh, only a 2-2, but it's a, still a bear with upside, massive upside in some cases, solid 3 for me. Uh, next one, I have to find them among these ridiculous arts on here, and might be able to read half of the cards themselves. Austere Command, 4 white, white sorcery, this is a doozy of a list here. Choose to destroy all artifacts, destroy all enchantments, destroy all creatures with converted mana cost three or less. 
or destroy all creatures with converted mana cost four or greater. Read IE every damn thing if you choose those last two modes. Um, how do I put this lightly? Uh, you cast this on your opponent and you make them cry. This, 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 this will end the game pretty much on the spot. You're like, well, your guys are slightly bigger than mine. They're all dead. <laughs> uh, this is an absolute four for me. Modular spells like this that give you this much flexibility, just go crazy with a card like this. Absolutely bonkers. Solid four. Uh, next one we have is Loyal Retainers. This is a two and a white human advisor. Uh, it's a one one. You can sacrifice this. Um, only during your turn before attackers are declared. Old cards are weird like that. Um, this is because this card, I think, is back from Portals, I believe. Um, sacrifice Loyal Retainers. Return target legendary creature card from your, from your battlefield, your graveyard, to the battlefield. Uh, again, Containment Priest. Can you imagine blowing somebody out with this thing? Ah! Two for one it. Um, this, is, this is a two for me because... You've got to have a legendary creature in your deck to make it worth it. That's already been dead. Um, that being said, the ones in the set are pretty damn good, especially the ones that are in white. So I can see this thing being okay, but as it is, it's just kind of filler. Um, yeah, it's all right. Uh, <laughs> oh man, You're, this this next one. I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna preface this with a caveat here. Don't play this if you want to keep your friends at the pre-release. Play this if you want to win your pre-release. Because it's Worship. Three and a white enchantment. If you control a creature, damage that will reduce your life total to less than one reduces it to one instead. If they can't kill your creatures, they can't kill you. Uh, at this point, they're bringing, this is when you're bringing in cards. Um, I'm also forgetting what it's called. I forsake the worldly. Um, if your opponent plays worship against you, you bring that in. You kill this. You kill this enchantment. Otherwise, you're not winning the game. Flat out, that's it. You have to beat them by decking them, and that's gonna take forever. Um, worship gets a four with the caveat of don't be a dick playing this card because it is a dickish card. Uh, the last white invocation we have is Wrath of God. Two white white destroy all creatures that cannot be regenerated. That clause used to matter, and it still kind of matters in modern to an extent, but whatever. Um, Another solid four. I like unconditional supers a whole lot, so play this card. It's great. Um, so that does it for all of the white cards. Uh, this took almost an hour. I'm gonna get the time down on the rest of these colors because I'm in the groove again, hitting out one at a time. All right. Uh, we should have all of these up by the end of the week. I will compile them all uh, and put them together into one bigger episode for you to listen to over on the MTG cast. Go check us out on there. Um, watch all the rest of the other set review videos with my lovely, charming self on YouTube. Um, also, I've done some other cool stuff recently. I did a Persona 5 review. Um, check out my past set reviews for other sets. Those are always fun to watch. Kind of see where things are going. If we got cards right, if we got them wrong. Uh, check us out on Facebook, EOT Newsflash. Check us out on Twitter, at EOT Newsflash. Uh, go over to Twitch. I've been doing some stuff over there with Eternal. It's fun. Um, it's Twitch slash EOT Newsflash. And also, you can all send, off your, uh, send us your love, hate, and respect to EOT Newsflash at gmail.com. And since Steven's not here, let's do it again with the blue cards. Thanks for watching, guys.